It is from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. At that time when Jesus came to the other side, to the country of the Gagasinese, two demoniacs met him, coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one would pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many swine was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged them, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the swine, and behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything and what had happened to the demoniacs. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I mean, good morning, everyone. Kalimera it was a handful of years ago, I was in central Texas, and I was speaking to a rancher, and in the midst of our conversation, I wasn't dressed as a clergyman, I didn't have my uniform on, I was there trying to get an axis. I was hunting. And when I was talking to the rancher, he told me, in the midst of our conversation, once he found out that I was a priest, he said, oh, I'm so glad that you're out here on the ranch. I said, well, why is that? He said, I have a hog problem, as do so many others here in Texas. And I've read in the good book what can happen to swine. Do you think that you can work something up so we can get rid of all of these pigs? Now, of course, what he was talking about was today's gospel reading, what we just heard. And as we know, or many of us know, there is a hog problem in Texas. Not only do they rip up the ranches all throughout town, but they even come into the neighborhoods of Cinco Ranch, Katy, where I live. And people who spend a lot of money to have perfect grass wake up in the morning to find it all ripped up because hogs came in from George Bush Park. Yeah, we don't like our hogs, but we do like to eat them. I unfortunately am not Jesus, and I told him I'm sorry. I might be able to get one or two with my 308 but I can't force them all to go over a cliff. We both got a good chuckle out of it, and I remember that exchange each and every time that I read this gospel reading. We hear not only about these pigs that go over the cliff, but more substantively, what we hear about in today's gospel reading is a whole lot about fear, and we hear a whole lot about begging. Fear and begging are what we just heard. It starts off with the villagers having fear. They feared these two men that were severely possessed by demons. They feared them to such an extent that they wouldn't even go to that part of the village because they were afraid of the demons that possessed these two men. Because of fear, because they knew who it was that they were afraid of, they stayed away. But that's not the end of fear and response. We just read a couple verses later and we see that there's another experience of fear. We see that the demons, the demons that have possessed these two individuals, when they see Jesus, they fear Him. They know who He is. They call Him out by name. And in their fear, they have a request. The demons actually pray. And they say to Jesus, are you here to torment us before our time? They're afraid. They have fear of the Lord. And then their request, their prayer comes through and they say, if you're going to cast us out, please, we don't want to go to hell. We don't want to be separate from you for all of eternity because that's what hell is. Hell is an experience of complete and total separation from God for all of eternity. Even the demons don't want to be in hell. The demons don't even want to be together with God. They say, please don't send us separate from you for all of eternity. Let us just go into the pigs. 
in response to their fear of God, they offer a prayer to say, please make sure that we're not away from you for all of eternity. And Jesus grants their prayer. He lets them go into the herd of swine. But as we hear in the exorcism prayers of the church, the demons who have no power, they have no power over you, they have no power over me, they didn't even have power over the pigs. And the pigs took off and went over the cliff. And then we hear a third experience. We hear a third experience of fear and begging that takes place. You see, the herdsmen that were out there and they saw what happened. They saw that Jesus had cast out these demons and they saw that they went into the pigs and the pigs went over the cliff. They went and told all the villagers. They went in and told the villagers exactly what took place and then the villagers all come running out to greet Jesus. And if you stop there, you might say, oh my goodness, they must have been so appreciative that Jesus cast out these demons. These demons that prohibited any of them from even going to that part of town. They must be going out there to worship him, to say thank you. But that's not what takes place. Now we heard from Matthew's Gospel account today, but in Luke's Gospel account of the exact same instance, the Word of God tells us that it is because they were afraid that they go to Jesus and they say, please leave. We don't want you here. Please go away. And this is where we have to pause. This is where we have to say, what is the difference? Those same villagers were afraid at the beginning of the Gospel reading today because they knew that those were demons that they were out there and so they didn't want to go near them. And then we see that the demons were afraid, but they recognized Jesus and they offer a prayer to say, please don't send us away from you for all of eternity. And now we get back to the villagers who already know what fear is because they fear the demons and they respond, they react to it by not going to that part of the village. And now they come and what do they say? Because they're afraid, they don't address him as the Lord. They don't even know who he is. He's just the one that cast out the demons. And they say to him, out of fear, we don't want to be around you. Please leave. Could you imagine for a moment? How crazy does that sound to you and to me 2,000 years later? Could you imagine for a moment? The Lord just went and did something wonderful for their village. And their response is, we don't want to be around you. Please leave. There can only be one rationale. It isn't because simply they were afraid. Fear isn't a bad thing. Fear is a gift. As long as it's coupled with knowledge. They didn't know who God was. They didn't know the Lord. And so the fear that they experienced ended up sending them in the wrong direction by trying to push the Lord away from them. If they would have known who the Lord was, if they would have known who Jesus was, if they would have known God and their identity within their relationship with God, then I guarantee they would have at the very least followed in the footsteps and examples of the demons and said, we don't want to be separate from you. They would have wanted to be together with him, but they didn't know him. And we might look and say, ah, oh, tragedy, they didn't know who God was. But the real tragedy isn't what took place 2,000 years ago with those villages telling Jesus to leave. The real tragedy is what happens in our lives now today. Now is where we bring it all back to center, 2023, here in Houston Metro. The real tragedy is that you and I have already learned all of this, is that you and I have had the opportunity to know God, to be taught about God. You and I have had the opportunity to have intimate knowledge of God. Yet how many of us 
how many of us push God away in our lives? Oh, we don't say it in those types of terms. We love to justify it with all kinds of rosy speech. (coughs) But every single one of us has pushed God away at some point in time in our lives. Our society has put up a sign that says, not welcome. And this is where the true tragedy lies therein. Think about it for a moment. One of our founding fathers, George Washington, in my opinion, our greatest president, in his farewell address to the office of the presidents, he said, this is a phenomenal beginning of a great new nation, but it will only remain a great nation if we maintain Judeo-Christian ethics as the foundation of our society. The minute that we get rid of that, the minute that we get rid of God in our society, this nation will collapse. Aren't we seeing it today? How many ways do we justify an immoral existence? How many ways do we justify going against God, telling Him that He's not welcomed in certain capacities of our life or in our life altogether because it's not convenient for us, because we fear what society or someone else might say if we are willing to proclaim in words and in actions that we walk together with the Lord? How many times have we pushed Christ out of our lives, told him, please leave this village, the village of myself, of my life, of my family, my household. And dare I even say, how many times have we pushed Jesus out of our churches? Because we're afraid of what? We're afraid to put in the hard work of actually being Christians. We're afraid of making the tough choices of living a moral life because we're afraid of perhaps offending someone these days. We have to put away those silly fears and we have to embrace the same fear that the demons had in today's gospel reading. We have to embrace the fear of what life, of what eternity looks like without God in it. You and I, we know who God is. He's our Father. He's our Creator. He's our Benefactor. He's the one who we all truly need. Don't be afraid of Him. Don't be ashamed of Him. Don't push him, and God is a him, don't push him out of your life. We will not push him out of this family at St. Basil's. Let's welcome him back into our society. Be afraid of what life looks like without him. Be afraid of what your family will turn into without him. Be afraid of what will take place in this church without him. Be afraid of what's happening in America and in the globe beyond as we push God out. Fear that and run the other direction. Back to the Lord. What a beautiful first step that we've all made by showing up to his house this morning. Joining ourselves to him. Let us be empowered by the result of that choice, by the experience of this divine liturgy, so that we can carry it back out into our lives, at work tomorrow morning, with our family, at the dinner table. And yes, reclaim the dinner table as a family, please. Throughout this week, let us reclaim and re-invite God back into every capacity of who we are and everything will get better. Don't be like the villagers. And as surprising as it seems, be like those demons that we heard today. Recognize God, 
fear an existence without him, and pray that he won't allow that. As our benevolent Father, we know that God won't forsake any of us. We have to make sure that we haven't forsaken Him. I have just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first, I've been asked to share, this is a, a beautiful thing, that our Friends of Cyprus Hellenic organization here local to our area is sponsoring an event next Sunday. We're following our fellowship hour in the community hall on Sunday the 16th. There's going to be a, a short film that is shown with a presentation by the director dealing with the atrocities, uh, ongoing atrocities <laughs> that have impacted the good people of Cyprus um, under Islamic, Ottoman, Turkish oppression. And so for those who have interest, and even if you think that you don't, if you simply care about human rights, consider, saying, consider staying beyond fellowship hour next week to be able to learn and to be able to focus prayers for those people who are still victims in that area of the world. The second announcement that I have is a thank you. A thank you personally and also from my family. As many of you know, my mother fell asleep in the Lord this past week. I traveled back to Oregon to be with her the week before and for her funeral service this past week. To have received so many messages from so many of you, even though an announcement was never made, was really inspiring to our family. I thank each and every one of you. I apologize if you haven't heard back from me when you sent me a text or an email or left me a voicemail. It's not because uh, I didn't care or appreciate the message. It's because we were quite busy. And so I ask for your forgiveness, but I thank you for the love that you expressed to our family. It was felt it was appreciated, and it helped profoundly. I pray that the glory of the Lord continues to be witnessed in the life of St. Basil the Great Greek Orthodox Church. As you've heard me say before, I will continue to say, we're not an institutional church, we are a spiritual family, and we will always be such. Please come forward at this time to receive Andiveron and go about your day and your week in peace. May the glory of the Lord be with us this day and always.